China's President Xi Jinping met his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin in Moscow. The two leaders discussed various issues, but the Ukraine war dominated the talks. Beijing highlighted itself as the potential peacemaker between the two countries. She called Putin his dear friend. He's the first leader to meet Putin since the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant against the Russian president over human rights violations. The United States has voiced concern over, uh, concerns over Xi Jinping's visit to Moscow. The White House National Security Spokesperson John Kirby urged Xi to use his trip to tell Putin to respect Ukraine's sovereignty and end the war. He told reporters that the US is concerned that she will reiterate calls for a ceasefire. This would leave Russian forces inside Ukraine's sovereign territory. He also called upon Xi to speak with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky about the impact of the war on Ukraine. Ukraine's defense ministry has said that, Russia, that a Russian caliber missile, a cruise missile was destroyed in an explosion in Crimea. It was being transported by train. Ukraine has not claimed responsibility for the incident. However, authorities said that it helps to demilitarize Russia and prepare the Crimean Peninsula for de-occupation. Russia has laid out conditions for further extension of the Black Sea grain deal. The deal was extended last week for 60 days, which is half of the intended period. Putin has said that the grain deal will now be extended on Russia's terms. He pointed out that the grain deal has unfairly prioritized well-fed European markets. Putin added that if the grain deal is not renewed, Russia could supply free grain to African countries. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said that he would soften his stance on the controversial judicial overhaul plan. After a telephonic conversation with U.S. President Joe Biden, Netanyahu said that he would postpone most of the proposed changes. However, the changes failed to satisfy people and they continue to protest against the reforms. They say that the reforms would undermine the Supreme Court as an independent institution. The National Security Police in Hong Kong has arrested Albert Ho. He's one of the most prominent pro-democracy figures and a former lawmaker. Albert Ho has been charged over incitement to subversion. He faces up to a decade in jail. This is the latest high-profile arrest in Hong Kong under the national security law. Chaos continued on the streets of the French capital Paris. This came hours after French President Emmanuel Macron's government narrowly survived a no-confidence vote. Protesters set piles of garbage on fire. They called for Macron's resignation. Several people were detained. Unrest continues over the French government's pension reforms. The government wants to increase the retirement age from 62 to 64 years. Protests against the rising cost of living continue in the East African country, Kenya. Police tear-gassed opposition leader Raila Odinga's convoy. Po police also used a water cannon to prevent Odinga from reaching President William Ruto's state house residence. His convoy dodged police roadblocks. Odinga emerged from a sunroof to address a crowd of protesters. He has called for nationwide protests. More than 500 protesters have been arrested in South Africa so far. This follows calls for President Cyril Ramaphosa's resignation. Protesters say they're not happy with the president's performance. South Africa faces high unemployment and an electricity crisis. Teachers are protesting in, South, in the South American nation of Bolivia. Protests have broken out against the government's plan for schools. Protesters call for more resources for the country's education sector. Teachers tried to occupy the headquarters of the Ministry of Education, which led to clashes between protesters and police. Former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan has, called threats to his, has claimed threats to his life. In a letter to Pakistan's Chief Justice, Khan sought permission to attend court proceedings virtually. The former Prime Minister played a video of perpetrated suspects present in court premises in plain clothes. He says they plan to strangulate him. Meanwhile, police arrested dozens of PTI supporters involved in recent clashes with the security forces. 
New York City is bracing for a possible indictment of former U.S. President Donald Trump. This is in the case of an alleged hush money payment to a porn star during the 2016 presidential campaign. Workers erected barricades around a Man Manhattan courthouse. Meanwhile, Trump's Boeing 757 jet was parked on the tarmac in Florida's West Palm Beach. He was spotted at an event in his Mar-a-Lago res resort. A major fire broke out at a church in the new, new, U.S. state of New Jersey. More than 100 firefighters and emergency personnel were deployed to battle the flames. The building's roof collapsed. The church was opened in 1974. Its campus includes a school as well. The cause of the fire is not yet known. A U.S. assault warship docked in Manila for a four-day goodwill visit to the Philippines. The visit comes months after the Philippine president, Ferdinand Marcos Jr., granted the U.S. access to four military bases. The Philippines is locked in a territorial dispute with China and five other countries. The International Monetary Fund has approved Sri Lanka's request for a $2.9 billion bailout. The country's president has said that the program will enable it to access up to $7 billion in overall funding. The IMF's board has signed off on the loan. This will kick off a four-year program designed to shore up the country's economy. A new report has said that the Metropolitan Police in London in is institutionally racist, misogynistic and homophobic. The report gives details of disturbing cases of sexual assault, usually covered up or downplayed. 12% of the women in the Metropolitan Police say they have been harassed or attacked at work. The report also found that frontline officers were demoralized and felt let down by their leaders. A new report by the United Nations has urged countries to take urgent action on climate change. The report says that humanity is to blame for the crisis. Secretary General Antonio Guterres warned the world of a climate time bomb. He said developed nations should take the lead and commit to net zero emissions by 2040. The East African nation of Somalia continues to face drought. As many as 43,000 people died last year. Half of them were children under the age of five. Somalia has witnessed five consecutive failed rainy seasons. The country has a population of 17 million. Half of the people are in urgent need of aid. The rate of fatalities are expected to rise in the first half of this year. A startup in Egypt is aiming to turn more than 5 billion plastic bags into tiles. It's trying to tackle the problem of waste entering the Mediterranean Sea and high levels of emissions. They aim to send the tiles to real estate developers. Egypt is one of the worst polluters in the Mediterranean region. It produces around 70, 74,000 tons of plastic waste, which enters the sea each year. The European Union executive has pledged over $1 billion to help reconstruct Turkey after earthquakes. The Commission will also provide humanitarian assistance in Syria. Remember, the European Union does not have diplomatic ties with Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. More than 50,000 people were killed in the earthquakes in Turkey. Even before Credit Suisse Group's, uh, Group AG's government brokered takeover, the Swiss lender was in the process of cutting 9,000 jobs in an effort to save itself. According to people familiar with the discussions, now the final layoff toll could be much higher. Bank of America's electronic stocks desk has halted trading with a desk at Credit Suisse. The Credit Suisse division deals with computer-led strategies. Bank of America confirmed the move in a statement. The bank said it would no longer send trades to Credit Suisse's ATS Crossfinder. Amazon is planning to eliminate 9,000 more jobs in the next few weeks. The development was shared by Amazon CEO Andy Jassy in, in a March 20th memo. The job cuts will mark the second largest round of layoffs in the company's history. The tech giant had announced plans of laying off more 18,000 employees in January this year. Tech companies have announced tens of thousands of job cuts this year. JP Morgan and Deutsche Bank are under the scanner. This after their ties with late sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein have come to light. The banks are set to face lawsuits over enabling Epstein's sex trafficking. Two women who say Epstein sexually abused them have brought cases against the banks. Shares of the First Republic Bank have tanked by over 17%. This comes after S&P Global issued its second credit downgrade for the embattled bank within a week. S&P has downgraded First Republic Bank's credit rating to B+, from double B+. The downgrading comes despite a $30 billion infusion from 11 banks. 
WhatsApp is reportedly working on a redesigned chat attachment menu for Android beta. The tweaked chat attachment menu is clearer. It also offers a better user-friendly experience. The new chat attachment menu is currently under development. It's expected to be released in a future update. The messaging platform has also been working on a similar upgrade for iOS beta. Twitter is reportedly experimenting with a new notification flow. This will enable users to get notifications for activity on any tweet. Users will be able to select Notify Me from the three dots menu. They would also be able to get alerts from, uh, for any new replies or quote tweets. According to experts, the feature could provide a way to stay on top of the latest trending conversations on the app. Users of Facebook's leaked artificial intelligence are using it to generate text for their Tinder profiles. According to reports, users are also using the AI to look for things to say during conversations. This is in the hope of getting a real-world date. Facebook lost control of its Llama AI after a leak earlier this month. AI dating is likely just one of the applications of the leaked software. Apple Music Classical is now available on the iOS App Store for pre-order. Its official launch is expected on March 28th. The update is likely to be released alongside Apple's iOS 16.4 iPhone software update. Apple Music Classical has over 5 million classical music tracks. This makes it the world's largest classical music catalogue. The Nothing Phone 2 is expected to release around July 2023. Nothing's CEO, Carl Pei, has also confirmed that the phone will indeed launch this year. He also said that the model will be available in the US. Rumors so far have claimed that we will see an AMOLED display with a 120Hz refresh rate. If tech, if tech experts are to be believed, the company itself will leak a number of teasers for the upcoming launch. In football, Tottenham Hotspur's manager Antonio Conte face, uh, Conte's fate is hanging by a thread. The club has begun searching for a new coach. Conte's departure is being accelerated as reports say the players are no longer behind him. Conte's dismissal became an immediate crisis on Saturday. He castigated the players after the three-all draw at Southampton. Wigan Athletic are a step closer to relegation from the English Premier League. The club has been docked three points for again failing to pay their players. The Latics are now eight points adrift of safety at the foot of the table. This is the fourth instance of the club not paying their squad in the past nine months. The penalty leaves Wigan staring at an instant return to League One. Prospective buyer Jim, Sir Jim Ratcliffe says he will not pay a stupid price for Manchester United. Ratcliffe and his team held talks with the club last Friday. Ratcliffe is one of the two interested parties who have publicly announced their bids. The other is the Qatari banker Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani. Al Thani's delegation visited United the day before Ratcliffe's trip. Fulham's Alexander Mitrovic is facing a lengthy ban. This after the Football Association announced the standard punishment for his dismissal against Manchester United would be clearly insufficient. Mitrovic gave Fulham the lead in Sunday's FA Cup quarter-final at Old Trafford, but he was sent off after pushing referee Chris Cavanaugh during a chaotic couple of minutes. Legendary Sky F1 pundit Martin Brundle has admitted that Mercedes could be looking to reduce Lewis Hamilton's income. Hamilton has yet to sign on the dotted line for the 2023 season. The development comes amid both parties confirming their commitment to each other. Mercedes has been struggling to keep up with Red Bull and Ferrari this year. Hamilton has been vocal about his frustrations with the team's decisions. Formula One's governing body, the FIA, is going to review its regulations. The move comes after controversy and confusion clouded Fernando Alonso's finish in the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Alonso had initially been given a five-second penalty for starting from an incorrect position. The FIA deemed that the rear jack had touched the car before the five seconds elapsed. However, Aston Martin provided evidence to prove otherwise. Cubans celebrated the national baseball team in a ceremony on Monday. The celebration comes after its remarkable performance at the World Baseball Classic. The Cuban team managed to make their way to the semi-finals for the first time in 17 years. Another landmark was that Cuba's national baseball team visited Miami after 60 years. New Zealand rugby has named Scott Robertson as Ian Foster's successor. The 48-year-old will take charge of the All Blacks after the Rugby World Cup later this year. The Crusaders coach has signed a four-year contract. 
It will run from the start of 2024 and take him through to the end of the 2027 World Cup. Zimbabwe and the Netherlands have kick-started their World Cup qualifier preparations with three one-day internationals. Zimbabwe will be boosted by the return of key players Sikandar Raza and Ryan Berl. The Netherlands have also named a strong squad. Both teams will use the ODI series to start tuning up for the Cricket World Cup qualifier. The third match in the India-Australia ODI series will be held in Chennai tomorrow. India had registered a five-wicket win against Australia in the series opener at the Vankade Stadium in Mumbai on Friday. However, the visitors bounced back in the second ODI at the Dr. Y.S. Rajasekhar Reddy Stadium to level the series. Indian origin American actor Mindy Kaling is among the ch those chosen for America's National Medal of Arts. U.S. President Joe Biden will present the awards. The ceremony will take place on Tuesday evening at the East Room in the White House. Singer Bruce Springsteen and fashion designer Vera Wang are among the recipients. Media mogul Rupert Murdoch is set to get married for the fifth time. The 92-year-old met 66-year-old Anne West Leslie Smith in September last year at Murdoch's Vineyard. He said, I knew this would be my last. The couple is looking at a late summer wedding. Prime Video releases the first official trailer of the fifth and final season of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. The final season will have eight episodes. The season premiere will release on April 14th. The season finale will be out on May 26th. Late actor Andy Kaufman will be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame class of 2023. The comedian is famous for his staged brawls. Kaufman and wrestler Jerry the King Lawler faced off in the ring. Kaufman will join this year's fellow honorees, wrestlers Rey Mysterio and the great Muta. Irish actor Cillian Murphy will star in the movie adaptation of the novel Small Things Like These. Murphy will also produce the film. He will co-star with Emily Watson and Kieran Hines. Principal photography is underway in Ireland. Reality TV show Dancing with the Stars has a new co-host. American actor Julianne Ho will co-host the show. Ho is a former ballroom champion. She also served as a judge for three seasons. Ho replaces co-host Tyra Banks, who quit the show after three seasons. Def Leppard drummer Rick Allen speaks publicly for the first time after being attacked in Florida. The 59-year-old was attacked outside a hotel last week. He sustained head injuries. Allen thanks his fans for their overwhelming support. The police arrested a 19-year-old in the case. Canadian singer The Weeknd reached a settlement in a copyright lawsuit. He was sued in 2021 for copyright infringement. Musical duo Sunil Fox and Henry Strange sued The Weeknd for copying their song. They alleged that he used the, their song Vibe King for, for his 2018 hit Call Out My Name. The duo alleged that he lifted their song's lead guitar and vocal hooks. A court in Florida convicts three men for the murder of rapper XXXTentacion. The 20-year-old rapper was shot dead in, on June 18, 2018. He was shot fatally outside a motorcycle store near Miami, Florida. The jury convicted the three men of first-degree murder and armed robbery. British actor Paul Grant dies at the age of 56. He was found unresponsive near London's King's Cross station last Thursday. He was declared brain dead at the scene. He was taken off life support on Sunday. He gave an interview at the same train station last month. The actor had opened up about his drinking problem. The actor is known for his roles in films like uh, Star Wars and Harry Potter.